as Canon, found a way to eliminate motion blur from your images using machine learning? The answer is yes, but it does require multiple photographers to properly train your camera. So how does this work? Well, stick around after this short message. But before we get to the details, please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything, helps this channel grow, and keeps you up to date on the latest camera coverage. JP 2024-038744 filed on September the 8th, 2022 and published March the 21st, 2024, claims to appropriately evaluate a camera shake correction function of an imaging apparatus. So, to solve the problem of blurred images created by camera shake, Canon's employing an artificial intelligence technology that you're probably familiar with, machine learning. And they're utilizing machine learning to evaluate the shake or the movement of either the subject that's moving or the shake of the camera to solve this problem. The learning process requires photos to be taken to evaluate the shake correction feature properly. It does this by looking at the blur in the photos taken by each photographer. That's right, multiple photographers. And it then calculates the effectiveness of the blur correction. By looking at the average blur in the photos taken by all photographers and how much the blur varies between each photo. So simply put, Canon's using machine learning to be able to determine if they have enough photos, if they have enough information from those photos to be able to, well, correct the motion blur. And it, I'm not kidding here. I have gone over the patent several times and it does talk about using multiple photographers to be able to calculate this motion blur. Multiple photographers? I know what you're thinking. And on first read, it appeared to me that the patent was employing an in-camera learning technique, but this isn't the case. But just imagine for a moment that you get your new camera, the Canon EOS R1, the R5 Mark II, and to properly get it working, you're gonna have to use a team of photographers to take sample images to get the system up and running and calibrated. No, this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. So why use multiple photographers then? What is the patent getting at? What Canon's doing here is that they're training the artificial intelligence system to develop a final algorithm that can then be used inside the Canon EOS R1, the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, or any other mirrorless cameras. If this topic sounds familiar, it's because it is. This isn't the first patent published by Canon covering motion blur, but it is the first to explain how Canon applies the fix. Just a few weeks ago, Canon published patent JP 2024-02621, which claims to solve the problem of motion blur. And JP 2024-03748 claims to be able to apply motion blur suppression. So what's the difference between them? Well, 032621 details how the camera uses multiple image to calculate the blur correction in camera. It does this by adjusting the weight between the first and second image, generating a second weight map based on the second image. Then a third image is generated based on the weight maps from the first and second images. It's the first and second weight maps that provide the data for the blur correction. And if you read both patents, you can start to see how each one kind of complements the other. But if you want to learn a little bit more about how Canon employs machine learning in the suppression of motion blur, well, we need to turn our attention to JP 2024-03-3748. It claims to solve the problem of blur to enable photography where a subject moves and motion blur is suppressed for an area where the movement is desired to be stopped. And while just having a single patent on motion blur doesn't give us a high level of confidence that we could see this in the Canon EOS R5 Mark II or the Canon EOS R1. But when we have multiple patents, and in this case, we have three patents related to motion blur, and those are the only ones that I've caught, there's probably others. So when you have multiple patents, patent applications, patent filings, that shows an awful lot of effort and resources committed to this on the part of Canon. Committed to this, and there's a certain opportunity cost because if they're working on motion blur, well, there's something else that the research and development team is not being able to spend their time on. And that's the beauty of this here. Whenever you see multiple patent applications like this, it tells you that this is a priority for the research and development team. 
And if all goes well during that process, then the, then the likelihood of seeing that in a future camera, such as the EOS R1, which is the flagship mirrorless camera, this is the camera where you can expect to see most of, well, anything that was developed in a patent. If it's going to show up in a camera, it's definitely going to show up in a flagship model. And the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, well, it's not as expensive as an investment as the Canon EOS R1, but at around $4,000, it's not cheap either. So we see a lot of the same capabilities in that level of camera. Now, the R100 or the R50, no, we probably won't see as many capabilities, but this is a big deal, and this is good for photographers. So if you want to stay up to date on all the latest regards regarding the Canon EOS R1, the R5 Mark II, other Canon cameras or lenses, and you want to know what Canon's actually working on, you don't want to trust leaked specifications that can vary from one week to another that contradict each other, which we've seen a lot in 2023 and here in 2024. The one thing you're getting with patent applications is you're getting to know exactly what Canon has been working on, working on enough to actually file a patent and to get it published. Well, then go ahead and subscribe and make sure you choose all notifications. And don't forget to follow me on X because sometimes there's other patent applications that aren't quite big enough to have their own separate video or other news and camera forecasting information that I'll put out that, again, isn't big enough to have its own separate video. And I really do love covering, covering patent applications. And based on the feedback received by many of you, it's something I'm going to double down on and spend more time and effort on. This video here was scripted and then shot later in the evening, and it took me several hours to put together. And then usually what I do is when I wake up, I take a look at the news. I see if there's anything major at around 5.36 in the morning before I decide to go down and shoot something. Now, patent applications take a little bit longer, but I think it's worth it. Because one thing it shows us is something tangible that Canon has been working on. The only question we have to ask ourselves after watching all these videos and reading all the patent applications, could we potentially see this in an upcoming camera? And it gives us a better picture of what we could potentially see. Everything on the table that they've worked on, well, it's easier to formulate a vision. Whereas before, we're just going on leaked information that might not be leaked. It might just be somebody coming up with an idea of what a camera could be, forecasting it, and passing it off as leaked information. And we've seen an awful lot of that lately, but this is concrete. And if you want, if you want to go and read these patents yourself, one thing I've done to try and simplify things a little bit for you is at the end of this video, right after this little speech right here, I've got all the images filed in the patents. Plus, I also have, for the first time I've done this, is an Eng English language translation of the patent filing. Although I have to warn you, um, it's pretty bad, the, the machine language translation. I usually have to do multiple passes of this. And also the, the formatting of the documents isn't that great, but it does give you a really good idea of what Canon's working on. And it saves you from having to go to the Japanese patent office to navigate the site, to do the translations. And um, I'm just trying to provide a little bit bit more value add. But if you're still watching right now, let me know in the comment section down below if having the patent images and the patent itself in English at the end of this video is useful to you, or if it's just a waste of time. Thank you so much for watching, and now let's cue the music.